So hello everyone. Uh, I am Indrajithi Gain and I am a part, um, um, PhD student at uh, Department of uh, Mathematics and Statistics at IIT Kanpur. And uh, presently I am a PMNF fellow and I have qualified CSI NET with the rank 108. Okay. So in the last few classes, we have uh, discussed uh, about the set theory and what are sets and how we can take union, intersection and all these things. Now we will... Um, develop some more idea using the concept of sets uh, and that is uh, called relations and functions. Relations and functions. So you all are aware of the term relation, right? Relation means relation. Relation can be anything like family member, family member, second friend. Third is very uh, interesting part of your life right now. It is girlfriend and boyfriend. Fourth parents right so this kind of relations we are aware of now the point is what is the mathematical point of the relation so first of all come to the some real life example then we can understand what is the mathematical perspective of this term relations okay so uh, let us take an example uh, you are connected with uh, many friends or family members and all these things like you are connected to few people in your life like you know someone you have seen uh, once upon a time or uh, somehow they are related to some related to somehow you know, to your family members or family tree like this you are connected to many people so uh, if i uh, ask you that how many people you are connected you can't count even or you can't uh, even recall the all the members now i am putting a particular restriction on this uh, uh, connection so i am saying that uh, how many people are um, uh, are uh, in some family tree or in some family relative or uh, how many people are relative to you like how many people are your friend how many of them are your family members how many of your them are uh, your uh, family relatives? Then the connected people will be a few numbers, right? Now I am putting some more restriction. For example, I am saying that who is your father? That is, I am particularly mentioning a particular relationship with you. Then you are you will point out only one person. Right. So how we build up this thing? Like in first, we are talking about all the persons you are connected with. Then we came up with the persons with whom you have some relation. And in the last, we are mentioning a particular relation and you just came up with only one person. So whenever we are putting a stronger condition, we are left with few people. Okay. Okay. So let us take another example. It will be more convenient to understand the example. So let us assume that you in your school, there are few boys and few girls. For example, these are the number of boys and these are the number of girls. Okay. In the same color. Girls will be in. Okay. This is in white. And this is in blue. Okay. This represents the girl's number and this represents the boy's number. Okay. So there are some few boys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there are some few girls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, I am asking that how many people how many girls this boy talk with? So this boy can talk with this girl. He can talk with this girl. Who he can talk with this girl. 
also this 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 and this so this boy can talk to everyone and similarly all the boys can talk to all the girls and vice versa right now i am asking that among this among this talkative uh, i mean conversation how many of these uh, girls are friend of this boy okay now the question is little bit different that how many uh, with whom this boy is talking was the previous concern now our concern is among these girls among these girls how many of them are friend of this boy friend of this boy so it may happen that this girl boy is has a friendship with this girl this girl or this girl okay with three girl he has some friendship and now i am putting extra condition that with whom this boy has relationship that is boy, boyfriend girlfriend connection then suppose the boy has girlfriend uh, boyfriend of this girl okay so this boy is connected to only one person so this is the concept of uh, cartesian product so this is the uh, condition i mean the this is the concept of cartesian product relation and function so which is which one is cartesian product so cartesian product was the first one that this boy can talk to every girl that idea is corresponding to the concept cartesian product next this boy was friend with three girls so that is the some uh, we, we put we have uh, put some more restriction so that, that is called the relation and in the last one we put a strong condition that is with whom this boy has some relationship like boyfriend girlfriend relationship so that is only one person okay so that is called function so we will um, discuss these mathematical ideas step by step so at first at first we can um, start with the cartesian product cartesian product okay so let us assume two non empty set a and b okay so a contains some color red and blue and b contains some uh, numbers r b w okay now if i denote the cartesian product a cross b a cross b this this notation stands for the cartesian product notation okay so a cross b means the collection of all the elements which elements red comma r red comma b red comma w blue comma r blue comma b blue comma w okay so a cartesian product b is the collection of all these elements so uh, one may be get confused that how we are getting that we are putting we are picking one element from uh, the first set one element from the first set and then we are making a pair with each one like once you can see clearly and then we have taken the second element and we make a pair with each
okay so if uh, in uh, geometrical point of view we can uh, see this okay so red one is drawn by red and let blue one be drawn with blue and that r can be written as white r this is our r this is our b this is our w this is our w okay now clearly you can see what about these points what about these points this six points right so first point is red and r red r so this stands for red r this stands for um, blue r sorry this stands for blue r similarly red b blue b red w blue w so that we got six points and clearly you can see that this yellow dotted points i mean say, circle, uh, points circled by yellow these are the these six points so this is called a cartesian product so let us discuss another example of cartesian product so let us take an example example okay okay let us take a numbering numbering example let a equals to a not a b c so small a b c can be written a b c and b equals to 1 2 3 then what about a cross b so a cross b equals to a 1 a 2 a 3 b 1 b 2 b 3 c 1 c 2 c 3 so these are the elements now one can ask what about b cross a so b cross a will be this 1 cross a 1 cross b 1 cross c uh, 2 cross a 2 comma a sorry, 2 comma b 2 comma c 3 comma a 3 comma b 3 comma c now first point out that remark one read remark this notation a comma 1 is an element which is called which is called ordered pair in the lecture class of sets we discussed that under open interval we are discussed about that uh, if you put in uh, some open interval oh, that is an interval okay so whenever we write two elements in some first bracket it is an interval we discuss that thing but here this term stands for an ordered pair ordered pair means it has a in the first quadrant one in the second quadrant so one element it is particularly one element this is particularly one element whose first coordinate is a and second coordinate is one so this is called the ordered pair this is called the ordered pair now second one a comma one 
it is not equal to 1 comma a why because two element are equal whenever they have same coordinate here check that a and 1 are not equal and 1 and a is again not equal therefore two ordered pair are equal so note that two ordered pair are equal if they are coordinates are equal okay so when they are equal so um, let's write again uh, that is that is a comma b equal to c comma d if and only if a equals to c and b equals to d and not and it's going to second bracket we can put second bracket and it's enough okay so two order two order pair equal if and only if this happens so by this remark we can easily see from here we can easily see from here that a cartesian product b this is not equal to b cartesian product a okay so these two sets are not equal when they are equal when their ordered pairs are in same manner and they are equal in uh, in each set we have already discussed that when two sets are equal when the sets are equal when they both have same elements irrespective of order which order not the order of the ordered pair it was like uh, okay you take an example then when two sets are equal Suppose we have a comma one, a comma two, b comma three, b comma three, and another set we have it is all s and b is a comma two, b comma three, a comma one. Okay, so clearly you can see this equals to this this is equals to this and this one is equals to this one so the elements of the these two sets are clearly same which implies s equals to p now suppose suppose p prime equals to a comma one, a comma two, b comma three, and b comma one. So for this extra element, S is not equal to P dash for this extra element. Okay. So thus we can discuss that when two states are equal or not equal. But whenever we are talking about Cartesian product, then uh we may uh, consider this set uh, one example again that is p w so w just write this in different order pair like one comma a two comma a three comma b see that here it is one comma a it is one comma it is here it is a comma one but it is here one comma a so obviously those two elements are not equal similar for all others so this will imply this implies that is not equal to p and this implies is not equal to w so whenever we are talking about the cartesian product we must bother about the ordered pair i mean the ordered pair is in some same order okay and by this manner we can discuss that a cartesian product b and B condition product A 
मे नॉट बी इक्वल ओके सो लेट अस टेक ओके नाउ डिस्कस वन थिंग दैट सपोज ए हैज फाइव एलिमेंट्स नंबर ए इक्वल टू फाइव B has three elements. That is number of B equal to five. Then question is, question is number of A conditional product B. What is this number? So let's go to the first example. Yeah, okay. So in this case, A had two element and B had three element. So when we make the Cartesian product, this one. So by this we can um, find here that how many numbers we have or how many YOLO circles we have. So we have six circles, right? So the number is Cartesian product uh, a cross b. It has cardinality six. Six means two cross three, which can B like n of a cross n of b, right? Right. So the number of a cross b equals to this is equals to a cross b. This is equals to number of a cross number of b. Cross means multiplication. Number of a plus number of b. So thus we can count. The number of a cross b, and whenever someone give you to write a Cartesian product, you can count by this number, and so that you can also you can verify that uh, you have written all the elements or not. Like someone, if someone asks the question that uh, write a Cartesian product b, and somehow you miss one point, then you can count how many number you have written and uh, how the number should be. Those two are equal or not. That you can uh, cross verify. So let us write in this point a definition of Cartesian product. So, given to non-empty sets P and Q. The Cartesian product P cross Q is the set of all ordered pairs, ordered pairs of elements from of. Elements of elements from P and Q. That is P Cartesian product Q equals to collection of all these order products, order pairs P and Q, such that P belongs to capital P, Q belongs to capital. Q. So whenever we write P in the first position, then P should be in this first quadrant, and whenever the Q in the last means Q will be in the last position. So uh, depending on the order pair, we write the P Cartesian product Q or Q Cartesian product P. So let us take an another example. Okay, another example. Like let us suppose that example. Suppose um, P equals to D L M P A A and Q equals to zero one zero two zero three. Then you can just uh, think about this problem that what will be P cross Q. 
So till me we uh, till uh, you, you and I can write or just think and I can I am writing. Just you can think. And pause at this moment and you can think about this problem. So I am writing zero one. Then what next? DL with zero two. DL with zero two. DL with zero three. Next MP with zero one. MP with zero two. MP with zero three. Next K comma zero one. K comma zero two. K comma zero three. Right. K comma zero three. Now. Uh, Suppose I am confused at this point that I have written all the elements or not. So let us count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have got um, cardinality of p cross q nine, and you can see it has three elements. It has three elements, and clearly it has, should have nine elements. So we have completely written all the elements. Now one can ask example two. Take example one. Now one can ask that: What if p equals to five? P is an empty set, and q is a in general normal set. Q contains a, b, c. Then what about p and q? So let us write p cross q. What is the definition? The definition is p comma q such that p belongs to capital P, q belongs to capital Q. Now, p belongs to capital Q means p is not a number because this capital P is five. So, if I replace this p by five, what it stands? P belongs to five and Q belongs to Q. So P belongs to five means P is nothing. Therefore, this state becomes five. Is it clear? Because we don't have any element, we don't have any P, so we can't get any ordered pair. Whatever Q may be, Q can Q can have infinitely many elements, but our P has no element. So how can I get an ordered pair where the first quadrant is nothing? So there should be some non-zero element in the first quadrant. So p cos five, p cos two should be equals to five. Similarly, if let example three, what if p equals to some infinity set? What if cardinality of p is infinity? That is, p contains infinitely many elements, and q is some finite set called a. Okay, let's contain only one element. Q contains only one element. Okay, then how many elements p cross q can have? So, p cross q is the collection of all p comma q. Uh, such that p belongs to capital P and q belongs to capital Q. So clearly, this is nothing but the collection p comma a such that p belongs to capital P. Right? Now, how many elements this can have? So we have infinitely many choices of p. Therefore, in of p cross q. This must be infinity. Why infinity? Because we have infinitely many choice of p. So you can have infinitely many p comma a, the curve order pair. Okay. So these three are uh, examples of uh, Cartesian product. And uh, okay. Now 
we can discuss about uh, another condition product like what about uh, this example okay example four suppose we have three sets suppose we have three sets C A B C. Suppose we have three sets called A, B, and C. What about A cross B cross C? Just follow the previous definition. A comma B comma C such that. A belongs to capital A, B belongs to capital B, and C belongs to capital C. And we can carry this up to finite or infinitely many times. Okay, so you all are aware of the plane that is R two or R three Euclidean space. So if we replace A by R, B by R, C by R, then first. R square equals to R cross R, and R cube equals to R cross R cross R. R stands for the real numbers. Set of real numbers. So, if this is the set of real numbers R, then this is our R two. A plane, and this is our R three. This is our R three, right? So thus, using Cartesian product, we can get a plane, a three order coordinate, and a line. Okay, so using this line, we just got uh, R two and R three. Okay, so R two means all these points, like all these points are included. All these points are included. Similarly for R three, all these points in three D we are included here. Okay, okay. So thus we have seen some examples and definition of the Cartesian product. Now, using this definition, we have stated that two orders pair are equal. We have uh, a remark. Where is this? Okay, so. Using this remark, one can discuss some few more examples. So let us assume one example that suppose they are given with one example that if x plus one y minus two this is equals to c comma one then Find x and y. How we can find? So clearly, just equal. Make it equal. Make the coordinates equal, which implies x equals to two, y equals to three. And if you can put this here, then you can see x equals to two means two plus one equal to three, and three minus two equals to one. So we are done. Similarly, what about the example? This what about this example? A equals to one, two, three. B equals to three comma four, and C equals to four, five, six. And they are asking for this part. A Cartesian product, B intersection, C. Rest you can do. So what about this? And what about this? A Cartesian product, B intersection, A Cartesian product, C. So you can decide this to another. You can understand properly. Okay, so what about the first part? What is B intersection C? 
B intersection C is the set only singleton four. Now, if I cross, if I Cartesian, we get a Cartesian product of P cot C in B intersection C and A, then we will clearly get which one? One comma four, two comma four, and three comma four. And what about the second part? What is a Cartesian product B? Which is the collection of one comma three, one comma four, two comma three, two comma four, three comma three, and three comma four. And what about a cross c? A cross c is one comma four, two comma four. 3 comma 4 1 comma 5 2 comma 5 3 comma 5 uh, am i right okay yes uh, then 1 comma 6 2 comma 6 and 3 comma 6 so if i take the intersection right now what we will get a condition product b intersection a condition product C, we will get C, which are the common elements here. Uh, 1, 3, 1, 4. Okay, which one does which are the common elements? So, 1, 4 is 1. Okay, what about 2, 4? 2, 4 is there, and what about 3, 4? Yes, 3, 4 is there. So these three are equal elements in this to both of the sets. So we will write this common elements only. So what is that? One comma four, two comma four, and three comma four. Okay. And from here, one can easily see that this set and this set. What we can see about these two sets are the same or not? So, from this point, one can understand the relation between A, Cartesian and Cartesian product B, union C, and A, Cartesian product B, union A, Cartesian product C. This, this formula is for intersection, and one can also understand that A, Cartesian product, what is the relation between you can check. So, this thing, these two sets are equal. These two sets are equal. So, what about this thing? Check. Check that. What about A Cartesian product B union A Cartesian product C and A Cartesian product? B union C. You can check this thing by yourself. Okay. Okay. So till now we have discussed about the uh, Cartesian product and all these things. Now we can go in the part relation. So what is relation? Relation means we are putting, we are putting some restrictions on the Cartesian product. Okay, which kind of restriction? So let us take an example. And from there we can, okay, we have already an, one example. We already have an example. Where it is, where it is, where it is. Okay, this example, it will be easy. So we can make a copy. Okay, you can make a copy of this thing. Okay, I'm gonna make it. No, we can't do it. We can, we can do it. Okay, we, we can write this again. 
it will take some time but it's okay red and blue and b is the set r b and w or we can write it here white one color extra color okay so you are aware of now uh, what is the cartesian product the cartesian product will take the nine elements containing a red cross gray comma r red comma b red comma w blue comma r blue comma b blue comma w and um, white comma r white comma b white comma w so we know all this thing now we are putting one restriction one one restriction restriction is um the second element the second element the second element will be will be the first letter of the first element okay so by this you can understand what i am saying one restriction okay so what is the restriction that the second element that is if i am considering about talking about a cross b then the second element i mean the element of b must be an element the first letter of the element of a so after putting this restriction what we are left with we are left with the set red comma r blue comma b and white comma w okay so from the cartesian product set we picked particularly three element with some restriction so this is the relation so we put some relation on the set and we got this thing okay okay now take another example the example is like this suppose a be the set a containing 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and r be the relation about uh, a cross a okay yeah, we are r is subset of a cross a a cross a Now, which subset containing x comma y such that y equals to x plus one? So this is our restriction. This x y such that x belongs to a and y belongs to a. Both are elements of a. Let me just write here. See, x comma y both are elements of a. Okay. So x and y both are elements of a with the restriction this. So R is the collection of all those elements. So they are one comma two, two comma three, three comma four, five comma six. Okay. But if I find the Cartesian product, it will contain twenty five, twenty thirty six elements. But by putting this relation. We came up with only these many elements, right? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. We are left with only five elements. So we put a particular restriction, and we are now left with only five elements. Okay. Okay. So what is the definition of this relation? So definition. 
non empty set a to a non empty set b is a subset of the partition product a cross b and and the sub three subset is derived by describing a relationship relationship between the first element first element and the okay so the first we are defining a particular relation nothing else we are defining a particular relation derived by describing a relationship between the first element and a second element so whenever we put this uh, extra relationship condition then we get we are left with some few elements and that's elements are that set that set is called the uh, relation set the set of relation r so this, we are till now we are working on a set okay we are working on a set and subset nothing else now in this relation this set is called uh, this not this set how many ele elements are there in the first quadrant 1 2 3 4 5 so the set 1 2 3 4 5 this is called a domain so what is a domain domain is 1 2 3 4 5 what about the range range is the images so one has image 2 so this image this is 2 is called image of 1 of 3 5 is called image of 4 6 is called image of 5 and the range is the collection of all these images 2 3 4 5 6 and what is the codomain codomain is the set a itself that is from where we pick the range set so the range set is its range set is subset of this codomain set okay so thus we can define a relation and i think uh, we can we should stop here otherwise it will be difficult to digest all these things so for the next class we will discuss some few examples of relation and we will go to functions and we, we, we can also see uh, why is the difference between function and relation and uh, why all functions why the all relations are not functions we will see the condition of that uh, thing and um, also you have discussed the cartesian product and why is the card one uh, okay clearly you can see the cartesian uh, difference between cartesian product and relationship uh, in this uh, lecture and uh, here here you can clearly see wait why is it okay here here you can clearly see that putting the restriction how can i uh, deduce the number of elements from a cartesian product to a relation now you will see that um, there are some elements in this relation or in some relation there are some few elements which are not necessary for the function so we will discuss in these things in the next lecture